so a very good morning uh, to all of you and a good afternoon to dr rekha call in australia uh, i am extremely delighted uh, to welcome uh, a distinguished panel of educationists this morning uh, to talk on a very pertinent theme uh, and since we all know that in the last uh, two months or so the whole educational fraternity has been going through a, a very uh, tough phase uh, when we are under yeah. lockdown and we all are finding different ways of uh, teaching and learning uh, and assessing students um, it is good to see that the teaching fraternity has come up to the challenge and has adopted and adapted itself to the current situation uh, and uh, we are uh, you know now using various online tools to reach out to students to connect with them and to uh, carry out the whole uh, transactional process uh, that we normally do in the classroom uh, now online uh, in this regard uh, we thought that it would be very important to also discuss what are those uh, you know um, aspects of assessment that need to be uh, understood or that need to be um, you know carried out uh, so that uh, during this time when everything is online how do we carry out assessments Uh, since we know that most of the universities and colleges have a habit of conducting uh, um, paper pencil based tests uh, at the end of the semester uh, but in the current circumstances these tests uh, are certainly not possible uh, or maybe if they become possible it will be with a lot of conditions of social distancing and certain norms need to be followed and would not be a very easy process so we thought that we would take guidance from experts in the field of education and teacher education to uh, tell us about what novel ideas uh, or assessment techniques we can use in assessing the uh, teacher educator of the 21st century hence in this regard we've organized this round table meeting uh, on the theme alternative assessments in teacher education so i would uh, first like to welcome our chairman dr arun k gupta Uh, who has joined us for his first uh, session uh, online during this pandemic although he has been keenly following uh, the various uh, online sessions that the college has been organizing till now sir i welcome you uh, i would also uh, yeah you would like to say something <laughs> yes i i'm delighted to connect with all my friends and uh, i welcome the students and all participants who are uh, with us to discuss an important issue which is relevant for all of us right sir thank you so much i also welcome professor rg kothari former vice chancellor of the veer narmad south gujarat university and a very uh, renowned teacher educator who was also the dean uh, and head of the education at case uh, baroda sir welcome uh, to this uh, interactive session i would also like to welcome professor rekha kol dean international from curtin university australia university of curtin yeah uh, i also welcome professor amit kots dean faculty of education from gndu amritsar uh, and also uh, professor hemant lata sharma former dean and head from md university rohtak thank you all for joining us uh, on this uh, small endeavor uh, so this is going to be a discussion uh, wherein we would like to have some concrete inputs uh, from all of you as to how Uh, alternative assessments uh, can be done we need to consider the whole uh, teacher education scenario in terms of end semester uh, you know uh, assessments as well as within semester uh, assessments which we call as the mid term assessments how teachers will be evaluated how their teaching practice will be evaluated in fact there is a question mark on many internship practices how they would be even conducted so it would be uh, a good idea to listen to your thoughts so we will uh, do this in two to three rounds with five to seven minutes to each uh, panelist to uh, share their thoughts and two to three points in each round so that at the end of the uh, session we have uh, about five points to six points each uh, from each panelist uh, and uh, then we would be working on what best solution can be drawn out of these points so uh, taking things further i would uh, like to start our uh, Uh, panel discussion uh, i'll first request our chairman dr arun k gupta uh, to kindly uh, start the proceedings and then we will uh, ask our experts to join thank you and it's uh, 
I'm really delighted to be a important person of this particular round table. Uh, friends, as you know that uh, our country is uh, passing through a crisis and uh, this crisis has been triggered by this COVID-19 pandemic. As a result of this, we have been facing constant lockdowns and our all activities have been seriously hampered. The educational institutions are, have not been any exception. They are closed since March and till today they remain closed. As a result of this, the studies and the careers of thousands and hundreds of students have been seriously jeopardized. Now, to give us some semblance of continuity, the government and other bodies have suggested to immediately shift to online teaching and use education technology because they think that if any particular mode can help us, it is education technology that can rescue us under these circumstances. However, little realizing that the problems, the challenges, and the issues related to this sudden shock of a paradigm shift from a face-to-face, full-time, formal teaching to total online mode uh, is not that easy. As some of the surveys have also shown this thing, the QRS survey, recently said that India is not yet prepared to shift to the online teaching. Uh, Igloo's Vice Chancellor, Professor Nageshwar Rao said there is still a lot of confusion about different issues regarding online education. And education through online mode is a distant reality in India. That's what the foreign media has also you know, pointed out. Now under these circumstances, when we talk of teacher education, we have to see that uh, how are these issues to be resolved on the one hand? How can a semblance of continuity of curricular transactions be ensured? And then how are students likely to be engaged and assessed under these circumstances? My main concern is that I would like to ask a question first. Is our community of stakeholders, that is institutions, teachers, students, really ready to make this paradigm shift all of a sudden. Number two, do they have the capabilities and the competence to deliver under the circumstances? Do we have enough hardware, software, and our students are equipped with all the basic gadgets, the connectivity, the power, the supply, and thing, and all our institutions technically savvy to have the technical manpower to not only maintain the systems and also uh, ensure the data uh, the mining the, uh, and uh, all kinds of information that is required. And can we, under these circumstances, resort to uh, the assessment as envisaged in the new curricular framework. Fortunately, some kind of, you know, guidelines are available in the new framework. We are under the traditional face-to-face -face formal teaching requires to be supplemented with certain strategies and certain new interventions, which all of you are very familiar with. But the question is, how to now transform all these technologies, all these interventions, all these new you know, practices, the so-called healthy practices, because many colleges are following it in their own manner. Universities are following it, but as a whole, as a, in the system, how can these be integrated in the system in the first place? And secondly, what best use can we make of them? But coming to teacher education, I feel that there are two different aspects. One is the theory, the other is the practice of teaching. 
and we need to consider the assessment techniques with special reference to these two different components. Secondly, we have to think also whether we are talking of assessment at the internal level and assessment at the external level. If so, are our, our, our examination agencies, regulatory bodies, certifying agencies also equally prepared to switch over and grant the learner the autonomy and the trust, the teacher, the basic trust that he requires to carry on evaluation at their own levels and between them and among them. And how can this assessment process be continuous, comprehensive, uh, you know, objective, learner friendly, and conducted in a non threatening manner? We have also to see whether our teachers and students are equipped with the smartphones, the TVs, the power supply, the connectivity, and things like that. And do they have uninterrupted and um, conducive environment to benefit from all these things? And to what extent we can place confidence in all the you know, practices that we will introduce? Now, in terms of teacher education, my own opinion about, about this thing is that we have to see that some of the assessment will have to be done in the non-formal manner and some of the assessment will have to be done formally. No assessment must have specific, otherwise it has no meaning. So either it can be diagnostic or it can be formative. It can, be, it can either be prognostic. It can either be summative, whatever it is. So we'll have to keep in view the basic objectives behind what assessment procedure we should follow, with what frequency, how and when, how can we make a, an integral part of the curriculum and the teaching learning process that we are envisaging online. Mm -hmm. Another thing that is to be seen about this thing is that to what extent the weightage can be given to all these factors and how we can sum up and have lead them to form a summative kind of picture about the learner and the teacher. Right. So I think that once you start talking about this thing, many ideas will come. I can just, you know, start by saying that in our new particular framework, we talk about supplementing the curricular transactions with things like assignments, like discussions, like presentations, like field visits, like uh, teaching practice and, and virtual, you know, teaching practice, you and uh, report writing, case studies, project reports and things like that, diaries, the reflective journal and so many things we have been mentioning. The right. question is, how can these be transformed? Right. Or online mode. Right, right. Okay. And then we talk about specifically about digital learning and the issues pertaining to them. How can assessment be carried more effectively under digital circumstances? Right, right. So now I can see that we can certainly start the discussion and uh, we'll do our best to see what best can be evolved. Right. So thank you so much for your opening remarks. I'll uh, request Professor Kothari uh, to join us now and uh, to kindly share his views uh, on this uh, particular theme. Thank you very much, honorable members of the panel. It's a nice event you have organized, so you deserve a great congratulations. Now, situation as uh, Professor Gupta also said, is a mixed situation. How far this COVID will continue, we don't know. But people say it will continue up to September. Right. All the doctors and astrologers, even if you have a faith. And then also you have to be very careful. Right. So first you have to seek the confidence of the people that students will be coming at our level. Otherwise, they don't appreciate to come in the college. <laughs> but at other level, school level, they are very much eager to go to school. Even today, they say we want to go to the school. Now right. they can evaluate both, ma'am and mom. <laughs> they say now we realize that mems are better than moms. <laughs> <laughs> Evaluation now they had. 
so they will they would like to go but in such a situations now what to do uh, number one that online we have to go for online nothing wrong uh, two things are there in online whether uh, uh, facilities are available other day somebody is talking that in india in 135 crores of population we had 128 crores of smartphones all may not be smartphones but at least 100 crores will be smartphones right. so availability of this phone is there with internet and other things only thing internet should be available so yeah. it is available and as, a, as and when we need it can be made available so online teaching we can continue as such there is no problem how to go in online i, I will say that now suppose in one semester we have six courses right. subjects other we say this and 18 credits per subject we say three credits are there if you take b.ed m.ed even i go beyond wherever the particular uh, agencies are there nct and all other bodies are there right there is a fixed number of students right. we have in b.ed 50 so what i said that if there is one subject uh, as per guidelines of choice based credit system, there are four units maximum. Right. And each unit, there are four subunits. So we have now 16 things, 16 points of teaching. Right. So can we straightway divide these 16 meaningfully and give it to the 16 students? Remaining 16, second unit, third, sec uh, 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 third unit, fourth unit. So for this 50, I think that part is enough. Now, what needs to be done, that either you give some online lectures in general about the brief of the course, and then you ask them to go through particular books, references, websites, and all other things, but they will be preparing this assignment or whatever you call it. I won't use a technical term paper. It is not a research or conceptual paper, but on a given topic, unit one, 1.1, 1 .1, one student will be writing something a two page three page is notice uh, note and he will be coming out with a nice uh, uh, literature right or two page note. now what to do now we, we here comes the online this he can do anywhere he likes now this in i think we will give 50, 10 to 15 minutes now how much time is available it is flexible so 15 minutes or 10 minutes they will be not be able to talk 15 minutes so i know many of our Great colleagues also can't talk for 15 minutes many times. So uh, you ask him to present for 10 minutes. And at a time, all these 50 students of my group, in tech, they, are, they have joined the online. Right. Now, after presentation, I need four teachers with this 50, huh? remember. Right. So time-wise, it's time consuming. Four teachers will be sitting. And if you say either you can go for 90 minutes or two hours, it is up to you, you decide. Uh, there's can also be a so if uh, 10 minutes so 40 to 50 minutes are per presentation so they will be presenting and then all 50s are there they are enrolled and and whatever the technology that it can follow and now the questioning reaction will start and those four teachers of the college this will be absolutely internal there is no external component Right. That also you can introduce, but that will create little problem. So these four teachers will be sitting. Now, during presentation, uh, now on uh, on uh, horizontal, they will be writing the names of the student. Uh, uh, vertically, they will be writing the names of the student. And horizontally, we will be identifying some components. That what was the presentation skill. Right. Uh, when discussion start, how many of them are asking questions? We have to put a tick mark. So. And knowing each 50 students by these four teachers sitting, that is pretty much important. Right. Now he's asking the question. Judge the quality of question also. Simply, okay, why you have done this? Why you have not used? Such questions should not be there. Then when other questions are come, uh, will come, how the speaker is reacted or right. how the others are helping them. That is very much important. Others will say, so uh, a presentation by the speaker, then asking question by other groups, then uh, response by the speaker, that also is one problem. Then uh, clarifying the points. Sometimes he himself is clarifying, or if he is not there, out of that other 50, they also will be helping in clarifying this particular concept. They will try to add also, okay, sir, after you, you, uh, you are talking about the curriculum, but after you have not gone through the Hilda Taba book. So that's a good source. 
so like that they will be adding supplementing resolving their knowledge at this 50 and right. finally uh, they will be finding some contradiction also that by in your paper beginning you said that india is a poor country and at the end you have shown the per capita income and everything it indicates that we are not poor so finding the controversy so all this type of five to six point responding how they are responding how they are clarifying how they are resolving the issues how they are giving the additional information like that so it will continue so i think in 90 minutes if we are getting giving 40 to 50 minutes for presentation and 40 to 50 minutes for discussion so within 90 minutes or 100 minutes four presentations are over and one unit is over right so for for four units i think four presentations are needed so 400 minutes are needed or four a little less or more depends that should be flexible so four units can be taken care of now this is teaching part at right. the end there should be some time i said 90 minutes but this four colleagues sitting those who are they must be involved in teaching of that subject i am talking about say, psychology of learning and all those four students that are teachers or teacher they must be quite conversant with that thing and then they will also be giving their remarks right right and our presentation is over how presentation was done uh, which references they have not taken care of which are the latest references which are the latest articles on that that also can be given and when now you sit down when all 50 they had made their presentation we will see but knowing student is very much necessary here right in the offline that is there but right. in online so at least in the first semester somewhere such courses will be there where they will be coming at sit and simultaneous evaluation also will be there those criteria no that during this 50 presentation what was his response whether he was only asking question how many times he was resolving the issue how many times he was uh, clarifying the thing how many times he was adding uh, adding to the supplement uh, adding or supplementing some material or something like that and right. based on that we can give some grade so that is their final exam you take or you don't take and this is first point so this can be done second point you can say you can go for mcqs also right that can be done and based on the mcq but only thing weightage and our ordinances because our entire thing is comes with the ordinances we we don't have the flexibility so we have to see ordinances and at least wherever in, internal is there at right. least this can be followed this we will consider as our internal so that should be there and uh, uh, professor arun gupta also director sir also said that visit i always say that in b8 now of course visit will be difficult but when they come to the college in june july wherever 15 to 20 days continuously they should go to the school only without we have some uh, major questions we will uh, give them and with this major question they will be going to the school they will be interacting with the school teacher they will be interacting with principal they will be interacting with the students they will be interact with the students and non teaching staff also and a brief report will be presenting that what and they should identify some issues also that right. what are the highlights of the school these are the issues and these are the plus points and that will be again presented that again presentation can be done online i have no objection and that will give an insight that what is and here we will select A, a, a deviant sampling where good schools are taken or poor schools are also taken right. don't uh, leave it to the average so that can be done that visit uh, should be done very nicely and other in our things only thing practice teaching it should be in a, a real uh, mode so right. for that we should not compromise but other things projects writing term papers some conducting some case studies if all these things are there and presentation Right. Now, if situation is good, we can go for the uh, offline presentation also. If you think that can be done online, then online also can be done. And simultaneously, it should be graded right. wherever this will be our internal. And if at all external, then you go for MCQ type, or at the most, you can go for open book examination also. So okay. at present, these are my views Thank on you. the what we will be building. Your views really pertinent uh, and. Uh, all uh, the focus has been on student presentations and obviously mcqs uh, really don't uh, know how these visits would be uh, organized as of now but probably some virtual visits could be thought of uh, to give students exposure uh, so let us get some uh, international perspective now into the discussion i'll request uh, professor mm -hmm. rekha paul to kindly uh, add her uh, views uh, to the discussion Good afternoon, everyone. Am I legible, uh, audible? Yes, yes, you are. 
Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks, Adit J, for giving me this opportunity to rethink about assessment. And uh, today, whatever I'll talk, I'll specifically talk in relation to the teacher education. We are not talking about assessments in other other spheres. Um, uh, yes, COVID has put us into a position, position unprecedented position, and um, it, it hasn't happened only in India, it's globally. And I'll tell you honestly, in Curtin University, we struggled very hard to put everything online, although officially university never closed. Thankfully, School of Education, where we prepare teachers, all our courses were fully in fully online, and our staff didn't struggle while as working at faculty level or even in other faculties, there was lots of angst because people didn't know what to do, even using Collaborate. They had never used Collaborate and interacted with students. So it's not only India is technologically poor, it was felt everywhere and it uh, resulted in a steep learning curve for all of us, all academics. Uh, reflecting on assessment, I thought, what, what I feel is we, more than assessment, we are looking at evaluation. Mm -hmm. Because for me, assessment is for learning. Right. Assessment is not of learning. When we talk about off learning, it, it translates into evaluation, which is where we are determining the degree of uh, achievement in those students. Right. While right. assessment is the level of performance where students have reached. And I look at, personally, I look at perform, uh, sorry, assessment as a process and evaluation as a product. Right. And what right. we are struggling, I think this assessment issue should have come up as soon as we changed our mode of teaching. Right. But it came two, two months later because now it's the time we have to report on something. And it, to me, it looks more like an evaluation issue, more of evaluation process. Uh, and there is the gap. Personally, I, I've taught this assessment unit for a few years in our university, and I, I'm a big proponent of considering assessments when you are developing the curriculum and then those assessments translate into teaching and learning. And we need to be very clear with students from day one, right. how right. your learning will be assessed. Right. Uh, to keep um, my uh, talk short, what I would say when we look at assessment, keeping in view the situation we are in right now, um, I very much agree with Professor Kotari, where he is talking about the presentations, but keeping our experience in view, it can be a very lengthy and time taking process for the academics right. and who is, going, uh, and time is a factor. Right. So do, do we go in for focus group interviews, set up, you know, small groups, because right. that's, so encouraging them to uh, learn from peers. Do we give a project to a student or a group of students but so that all the students do struggle to work in groups and that collaboration is something which students de detest. But right. if we are wanting right. these teach, prepare them for the life or the uh, environment where they will be working, teach them right from when they are being educated. So collaborative projects, which should be authentic. And in education, we have an advantage because education, teach, teacher education, it's an applied subject. Right. It is not a core right. subject where two plus two is four. Right. And they have right. to have an MCQ. But where our students have to show that applied knowledge, give them an, ex, you know, a real life problem and they can be, do it by presentation they can do it uh, everyone has smartphones if we have a crore smartphones make a movie 
Right. Uh, while right. they are moving, take pictures. I know movie making can be at times difficult. Take pictures as you're going. And is it depends on what your project is. A teacher is going to teach in years eight or nine. It's an environmental problem. Take a local problem. Right. And yes, we need a rubric for it, the way Professor Kothari said that we should have. But uh, now that we are going into the technical field, there are so many rubric, um, online rubrics available, right. and teacher may not have to work so hard. Right. There will be minimal uh, use of paper pencil, and we having Blackboard in our university. Blackboard is the learning management system we use. It has an inbuilt rubric, which is excellent, which even grades the descriptive type of questions. You're not only MCQs, even a short answer, maybe right. uh, between two to 300 word limits. Uh, Moodle has a rubric, inbuilt rubric in it, which is a free for up to 500 users. We can use that. Um, and it can even look at the errors in student um, uh, writing. There are, there are many teaching and uh, you know, learning tools, online tools, but how can we use them as assessment tools? That again depends on the ingenuity of the lecturer or the assessment assessor. Like Google Forms can easily be used as an assessment tool Right. as well, which is freely available. Uh, we do use Coot and Quizlet. I have used in past. Right. And um, Trello can be used for group projects. And right. it's a very easy tool for even the ex uh, tutor to use. Right. But at the same time, you have issues of um, those uh, bodies, university bodies, whether they accept it or not. I'm not very um keen on using mcqs for assessment yes it can be used as a diagnostic assessment to get the students thinking right but uh, for summative assessment uh, i i have doubts whether you can use it in mathematics you can use it in chemistry but can we use it in a teacher training course uh, not very supportive of that. Um, we are, uh, some of the tools which are available and they are free, Wookie, our students use it very um, regularly. And Symbaloo has all the tools together. Right. So make them available. If our teachers have, uh, Taken the challenge of teaching an online system, it it will be it will be a struggle in the beginning. But we are we have to change this adversity into an opportunity. That's, That's how I course. look at it. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Perspective. Um, I'll come to Professor Amit Kortz now because uh, he's uh, the current uh, dean uh, education at Guru Nanak University and has almost over uh, hundred colleges under him and many of them colleges of education. So he's actually in the thick of things, uh, being uh, you know, the person in charge deciding things, how to happen. So I'll sir, request you to share your thoughts uh, on this particular topic uh, and uh, take things further. Uh, you just unmute yourself, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Adit. Uh, Really happy to listen to Professor Kothari and uh, uh, Professor Rekha call uh, on some very pertinent issues of assessment and evaluation. Uh, see, uh, some of the issues which were raised by uh, Dr. Gupta initially, uh, you know, whether we as teachers and uh, students, not only as teachers, but as system also, are we really prepared to go online? Uh, and the questions uh, which are raised are on the basis of uh, infrastructure, Right. Uh, do we have that kind of infrastructure? Yes, you know, that is a big problem. Like, you know, we are sitting in a border area and uh, we have tried a lot uh, for, for connecting uh, with our students. But there are certain places where we find a lot of difficulties. Yes, 
uh, because you know uh, the student who is belonging to a rural area probably uh, he has a smartphone but the place where he is living he doesn't have the connectivity that way yes so they they are certain issues and uh, in addition to that another issue which is very important uh, from uh, you know this point of view is uh, as a teacher uh, am i am i am i really uh, prepared to go online uh, mentally also and competence point of view also one is my attitude and second is my competence like uh, there there were a lot many tools which were shared by uh, dr call just now you know kahoot is there google forms is there but you know if the teacher is not uh, capable to handle these tools right so that becomes a very big issue because you know as far as students are concerned we can always involve them but if teacher doesn't have the competence to do it because uh, this this is quite new uh, for 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 uh, many institutions at present uh, in india at least right. uh, this is another thing you know and third thing is the attitude you know competence and then attitude of the teacher right. and the student also sometimes you know i remember initially when we started online classes right we would request the uh, we would send the link to the students will uh, you know take all other teachers also on board and uh, uh, what happened is you know they were uh, suppose there are 30 students and 10 have joined now people are calling them why didn't you join this is the problem we are coming they are not able to connect yes. so uh, you know getting uh, getting 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 re- regularly in touch with them was a issue Yes, another issue which i uh, which which i experience these days you know because uh, uh, when we talk of uh, evaluation uh, it cannot be disconnected from the way we are teaching that's right you know uh, uh, you know if, if if i was doing something face to face and now i'm doing online uh, the way i presented my content the way i interacted with them the kind of activities i have given them during my teaching if all those things are not in front of me probably i can't take decision how i am going to evaluate right, right. so uh, and one more problem was that you know they were all the time into offline mode and suddenly a situation came when everything became online i'll say this is quite good like you know for at least indian setup it was quite uh, good because uh, there was a lot of restriction lot of uh, limitation people were not ready to accept it there were so many people who were talking about flip learning blended mode and so many things but it was not practically happening that's right like even we were knowing so many things but we never practiced that because there was no opportunity with us because right. the university was not allowing us to go online we were not having online courses right. the students uh, they were not prepared for it but now it's a situation this is what dr rekha also said that this is an opportunity we have to take it and you know opportunity is different ways for right. example Uh, like you know uh, ugc have been talking about the teacher f- feedback for long time right and teacher unions have been opposing that <laughs> teachers right. have been opposing now see well, what's happening now the feedback is coming directly from the students is also coming from the parents right is also coming from the administrator now if this video meet is going on if this interaction is going on is being recorded right what i'm saying and what i'm presenting it is visible to everybody Oh yes, right. So this is an opportunity where we have to engage. Now, teacher, teachers have to really work hard for it. Right. Uh, you know how systematically they present, how systematically they assess. Now, it can't be something you know which is uh, <laughs> not, which is subjective. It yes. has to be very transparent. Now, it has to be objective. Yes. So this is something you know which is which is very important. Uh, uh, you know opportunity which which COVID has given to us. There may be so many. Uh, fallouts also no doubt about it because there's no comparison of face to face dialogue you know physical uh, interaction with the students but yes uh, this will change this whole scenario will change the mindset of the teachers also and learners also right one thing which i like to suggest here on this platform until unless we uh, we as educational institutions we are not developing the learning management systems uh, in our institution like bringing teaching and assessment on one platform right as dr rekha also said you know um, uh, moodle moodle is one platform learning management system so you know once we are on a platform then everything gets synchronized right you know if you go on moodle you will find lot of uh, uh, evaluation t- tools that could be short answer questions also long answer questions also they could be mcqs also they could be you know uh, uh, fill in the blanks also assessment of case studies also assessment of uh, 
projects also. So we can do all that. But one thing which is which, which I find sometimes which is lagging in the whole process, the way we are carrying on online systems, is that you know we are doing all the activities in a fragmented way, uh, sharing some uh, link with the students. Now we are not curating that. Uh, if there is thirty minutes video, we have shared it. We as a teacher, I don't know how to you know edit that video which is quite relevant for the students for a particular topic. Right. So if I don't have that competence, so what I'm doing is I'm giving the links and links which are of 30 pages uh, text, maybe 40 minutes video. Right. Now the student is confused and will devote a lot of more time. He is to devote more time on accessing that. Right. Uh, whether he is able to do that, whether he'll try, uh, he does he have that capacity that he take out the best out of it. Right. So. These are the areas where, where, where as teachers, as educational institutions, we have to work. Another thing, you know, uh, the tools which we have uh, talked about, uh, you know, Dr. Rekha has talked about many tools. Uh, Dr. Kutari also talked about certain ways, you know, wherein we can have few breaks and we can have evaluation in terms of, uh, you know, uh, students' activity, case study, or uh, anything else, uh, some kind of dialogue, some kind of viva or interaction. Right. Uh, one thing which I like to say is that, you know, all, uh, you know, we are confronting some problems like we have got around the uh, 80 uh, affiliated colleges of education with us. Right. Uh, so uh, whether to go online or offline, because uh, when we talk of assessment uh, and, you know, uh, I'm teaching and trying to assess the students performance uh, continuously, uh, that is one issue. All these tools can help. But when it comes to end term examination or end term evaluation, Right. There are certain issues comes in. Like, you know, if, for example, uh, UGC says that 50% you can go for assessment and 50% uh, you can go for end term evaluation. Right. Now, this 50%, uh, how, like, if, if I share some content, if I make some dialogue through some, uh, you know, maybe Google Meet or Zoom or something like that, right. uh, I interact with my students and then I ask them to uh, give some assignments. Right, right. Now, most of the time you will find that, you know, when we are online or we are engaged into uh, internet activity, we have a tendency to copy from the sources, right? Uh, we cut, copy and make one assignment, beautiful assignment. We insert some pictures also. We make it very beautiful. But the issue is how to check that, you know, this is not plagiarized. Right. If there are 30 students and there are 30 students have submitted one assignment, so how to see how, whether they have copied, all the 30 have copied each other or not. Right. So we need to uh, integrate our learning management system with some kind of uh, uh, plagiarized uh, softwares. Like, you know, Turnitin, Turnitin has uh, one software which is known as Feedback Studio. Right. You know, if, if, if uh, anything, Feedback Studio. Now, if we integrate that learning, you know, uh, learning management system with these kind of tools, so we can always see whether they have worked themselves on some case study or on some practical or some assignment, or they have just cut and copied and submitted one right. thing. Right. Second thing is whether they have copied from one another or not. Right. Even that could be checked in. So one thing which I like to say that, you know, whenever we are getting into some kind of assessment, uh, we should always try to uh, link it with some kind of uh, check whether you know this is not copied from any online source uh, or it's not copied from one another so okay. that would be one uh, measure which we should try to take when we are going for some kind of assessment Definitely. when it comes to uh, to 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 uh, you know online examination probably all the systems they are not so competent to uh, handle uh, online examination because uh, you have uh, like uh, if suppose i'm working on my computer whether I'll be able to access something else online while attempting my question or not, right. that would be a big issue. Right. Uh, so there are certain uh, institutions uh, who have really, like LPU is one of them, they have uh, made one system wherein uh, you, like they can give you online examination and during conduct of that online examination, you'll not be able to access anything else on your computer. That's right. Uh, so that is one uh, way we can do it. We can do it offline also, like, you know, we can, uh, bring like suppose I've got around uh, uh, say 5,000 students on the campus they have to be evaluated we can get them evaluated in our computer labs or uh, you know in computer centers wherein and they, they could go in phases where we can have one or two or three sets of papers 
and then they can work because you know uh, those students who are not able to have connectivity at their institution right so they have to be brought into that system where they can be because this is something which is uh, which is a concern for all of us uh, say somewhere in the month of uh, july and we all are working on it uh, something online probably we are not able to work uh, very successfully because neither we have that kind of facility nor the students they have that kind of facility where they can attempt one question paper all of them at a time right so we are trying to work on assessments yes through online modes uh, different tools which uh, uh, you know different uh, speakers they have talked about and there are so many other tools also right uh, which are freely available uh, we can always make use of them Sure. Uh, but as far as interim examination is concerned, yes, uh, you know we we need to think of uh, some kind of offline computer-based examinations. Right, right, right. Okay. Thank Good. you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'll request now uh, Professor Hemant Lata to join us and uh, you know express her views. She has uh, been uh, one of the leading teacher educators in uh, North India and. Uh, has been working uh, with a number of colleges of education. She has, uh, you know, been actively uh, assessing students uh, for their MPhil and PhD vivas, uh, and she is no stranger to assessment in teacher education. I will request her, ma'am, please uh, share uh, your valuable views with us today. Thank you, Adit. <coughs> yes, My greetings to all the honourable members of the uh, panel. I listened to the views of Professor Kothari, Professor Ahmed, Professor uh, uh, Madam Rekha, and the Honorable Chairman. And after listening to all the views, uh, uh, you had given us the title Alternative Assessment. Yes. When we talk of the assessment, we think of the assessment in terms of three, that is assessment for learning, assessment of learning, and assessment as learning. Yes. Assessment for learning, formative evaluation, we are already doing it. And now the question is that in uh, this COVID-19, when the system is uh, uh, that we have to work on online, so we have to think about the formative evaluation in terms of the online, which the students can do. Right. You know, um, Madam Rekha has talked about the certain tools which we, they can use for their uh, 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 formative evaluation. Right. Suppose we want to, as the Professor Amit said, we have given them assignments. Right. Assignments, they can go on this computer and they can use the computer for that. But the plagiarism part that we have to be certain before right. that, okay, they actually they have learned or not. Formative evaluation, may immediately after that, during the course of instruction, we can give some certain quiz. We can ask one question and uh, focus on one question and then ask them to uh, give them uh, what they have learned during this course of instruction. Second uh, uh, assessment of learning that we talk of the summative evaluation, which we do at the term and examination. For that, uh, UGC was also uh, providing us certain guidelines. And in that, they have given us okay, we should go on the basis of the internal assessment. And the internal, uh, internal assessment may be if we are doing something online, we are doing them giving the assignments and the seminars, presentations, and some, some projects we can also giving them so that they, we can uh, have a, an idea to what extent they have learned. To my uh, concern at the moment is assessment as learning so that they become both. Assessment and learning become synonym. Synonym in the sense that we have to think ki, uh, how online education will help us in developing metacognition among our students. To what extent, why I am, uh, 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 I am doing it online? What is the problem? To what extent I have the capacities with me? And to what extent I can be helpful? Right. This, this is the major part where I am concerned ki how these metacognition skills Chintan jisko bolte hain, ki wo, how the students will think about themselves, to what extent they have learned through this online teaching. And sure. for that, we will have to think certain online strategies for that, ki which they are, or online strategies that uh, institutional level they will have to, you have to decide. Right, right. It will be contextual in the it will be contextual in the sense because because you are having infrastructure you are what sort of infrastructural uh, instructional facilities you can provide and what sort of uh, 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 institution may kitna aapke paas computer ko input dalne ke liye 
टीचर में उतनी कैपेसिटी है तुम्हारे स्टूडेंट्स में उतनी कैपेसिटी है और टू वट एक्सटेंट यू आर डाइवर्सिफिकेशन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट ऑल्सो फ्रॉम विच बैकग्राउंड दे आर कमिंग वी हैव टू टेक इन टू कॉग्निज द डेमोग्राफिक वेरिएबल ऑल्सो वाई गिविंग ऑल दीज इनपुट्स इन द ऑनलाइन एजुकेशन and there some of the strategies which i had identified ki during the uh, assessment as a learning we can do to so, usme uh, uh, as as our uh, an open ended questions we can give right. where we can ask the student to what extent they have grasped the ideas in the class we right. can give them to reflect uh, ask them to reflect on certain issues on the lesson which they have learned right. and then we can use certain quizzes at the end of the lesson and then ask students to summarize the moment they will start i'm summarizing so they will give their uh, uh, inputs of uh, how they write, uh, have grasped the material right. which the teacher has just translated online and right. then we can use certain strategy as the dr amisa ki we were doing it we, we have we were using flip classroom we were using uh, uh, plus minus interesting strategies we are using think pair share strategies we right. all if the teacher is well versed in all these strategies the teacher can utilize all these strategies while using assessment as okay sure. that i think pair share is a very important strategy in that way ki uh, you ask a question students will take a few minutes to think and before sharing with their uh, counterparts they will uh, 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 think over it and share it and then it will be distributed to all as professor kothari said ki you uh, divide the unit and give it to the, all the uh, students and the, in that way you, they will be in a position to cover and while covering all this if the teacher is having all these strategies where he knows how to deal with these strategies will be able uh, will be in a better position to evaluate the students okay. because assessment for learning assessment of learning and assessment as learning all the basis they will provide all us the data on which we can assure that ki they are doing it another thing which uh, we can use as a rubrics for every and rubrics will uh, will be the criteria which will be again institutional if it is there as madam call said ki we are having so many rubrics online it is already available we can use that also if we are not in a position to institutional criteria we can frame and the teachers working in that particular teacher education will have rubrics in, and then uh, uh, with these rubrics we must have some descriptors also Excellent. descriptors will give an idea ki students will say ki oh you have done very good exactly second unit i need more help and the third student may say okay um, with different uh, 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 reference material i will be able in a position to but some if some descriptors will be there it will be useful for the teachers as well as for the students mm -hmm. also right. and that descriptors uh, uh, sorry uh, that rubrics criteria which you will form at the institutional level it should be clear to the students also as well as to the teachers also right. on which we are going to assess you people Absolutely. these are my views on the assessment and i am very pretty concerned ki how this meta cognition right. that that skills higher order thinking skills that right. too also we can develop through online provided the uh, the uh, bola jo disadvantages right and um, professor amit has pointed out because he is working in the field at the moment i am retired and he he knows how to handle all these situations it is very particular and very particular because in my area also my university is thinking of that we should go term and examination with only nine question let the students uh, give only five answer and go ahead with the term and examination right, right. and this is a strategy they are thinking of because ugc has provided a broad guidelines yes. and at the same time you will not uh, uh, they have asked you to take care of the covid 19 social distancing also sure, sure. and with these views and I have certain other also though i have listened and everybody has covered all that right. so thank you very thank much and this and much. giving me a chance to have an interaction with all the honorable members thank you thank you so much ma'am so uh, yeah adhering to the time limit we just have one uh, round to go now so i'll give everybody 2 minutes for uh, their concrete suggestions as to maybe two or three pointers as to let's try and uh, uh, you know give one some one thing more one thing more one yes. thing more uh, can you can you give me a chance yes ma'am uh, regarding the teaching uh, in, internship yes ma'am 
it is a very uh, concern because uh, uh, already we are having four months internship and the, uh, in the coming period we are not going uh, i'm not uh, thinking that the school will provide us uh, yeah. opportunity in my students they come and they will do it under the uh, uh, under these circumstances i am uh, giving an idea community participated okay jo aapke wherever the teacher is living and he finds that the construction is going on and their children are there and if they can provide that uh, education to them and yeah. if they prepare video at their own level it will be a great help to the society excellent excellent uh, because uh, society will have to we have, because uh, rt act has asked us to give these uh, uh, platform to this uh, these workers students also definitely we definitely not because our uh, institution never recognized this idea now yes. online facility they had given us we can teach them also right. community participative internship thank you so much thank you so much right so uh, two minutes each for every participant to give their final concrete suggestions before we start taking questions because students have uh, posted a number of queries online so i'll come back to uh, dr arun gupta and um, ask him to give his uh, final few strategies thank you very much <clears throat> i've listened to all the views given by learned participants here and i'm really impressed they are really uh, thought uh, seriously on this particular issue as far well, as i am concerned i would like to uh, highlight the kind of innovation and the healthy practices that we have uh, experienced and practiced in our college of education we have a pi 360 system in which all students and faculty members are involved and they upload their own data regarding their own, their own performance the results of what they have been doing and uh, this is documented is very full proof and it very very helpful as far as summative evaluation is concerned and also in internal assessment we have experimented with open book examination system and the uh, results have been published also and uh, the open book examinations under what conditions and how they can be conducted well and uh, with what frequency we have uh, talked about group viva voce you know techniques that can be evolved here not in one to one but in a group how can that be evaluated by a panel of persons we have uh, also experimented with continuous comprehensive evaluation wherein at the end of every lecture the teacher evaluates the performance of the particular students in that and they are, they can be very helpful in the assessment but what i'm talking about is in the context of education technology and the developments in that how we can make use of all these things in the online mode the question is how can we use that the micro uh, teaching how can we use simulation how can we use uh, group discussions and things like that to uh, evaluate the students and assess them on a continuing basis and the interaction between the supervisor and the trained teachers at the same time the video clippings the small films as uh, rekha ji was uh, suggesting and then i'm uh, i i would like that a one to one interview and counseling with the teacher educators of the students from time to time with a weighted assigned to this thing to know how the attitudes of the students are being shaped and how he is growing up will be very important and then in education technology the computer based examinations are very important with digital surveillance and uh, the immediate knowledge of results these are some of the you know important innovations that we can we can see of course the training the capacity building and the practice of the teachers students and their you know uh, adaptability and uh, uh, their familiarity with all these practices should be very important Other, otherwise the whole system is going to flop down right. uh, so in my opinion the innovations must be introduced what is the role of research experimentation trial and error we need to give to have some courage and risk taking to try out new things let there be some failures but that does not mean 
my situation is one in which we give the autonomy to the learner to decide how he would like to be examined with what tool he would like to be examined when and where he will like to examine what are the convenient you know the things and the onus of uh, assessment should be put on the learner that should be the basic change that we must introduce in our system of teacher education thank in the context of assessment right right the pupil teachers thank you thank you so much for your suggestions uh, professor kothari yes sir uh, number one that technology is not going to replace the teacher that is number one right <laughs> you can take the assessment through online learning or whatever it may be that is there but right. in a course a, a professional course where we give the degree of ba ed and mbed person <laughs> replacement is not possible assistance can be taken and it's not that that covid will be there throughout the life that's yes. not there. i have seen many colleges and universities when i visited them they said sir zero zero semester chal raha hai <laughs> means ek saal se exam nahi hui do saal se exam nahi hui this situation is very common in 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 many parts of the india but you take the help of technology i don't deny in right. teaching also in evaluation also as yeah. professor rekha madam was talking about some ready made tools available rubrics we can use them but see whether they are suitable to our content and our pedagogy that also needs to be examined so that also can, we can evolve our own strategies for evaluation right sir Remember we said that case studies can be conducted okay fine i said term paper and all these things that will next year it will be a copy case will come that is bound to be there so preparation of the case study of good school case study of a poor school uh, learners evaluation where the slow learners are there gifted learners are there their case studies can be taken we are writing and that should be a very close contact between teachers and taught Right. so you must develop a profile all teacher educator will develop profile of their at least 10 to 15 students and they will be adding the various epi episode anecdotes and based on that after final discussion we can go but how far our university ordinance will permit we don't know because right. 50 50 external evaluation then by a hook or crook lesson should be observed and by and why why an annual lesson you, you can go for all the lessons you have seen 30 or 40 that can be evaluated and given the grades so number one it cannot be 100% replaced but you have to take the supplement right. you need not worry semester 6 mahine ke baad degree milegi i think you should not worry because right. it is a professional course and it is a serious course but this term paper assignment writing case studies project working in a group what uh, 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 hemant lata madam was pointing out community participation all right. these things should be given proper weightage so i think one more workshop can be conducted in the light of covid ke what changes what ordinance you have to change and what content you have to change that right. i think needs to be done thank you thank you so much thank you uh, professor rekha call um i do agree fully that technology cannot replace a team that that's the bottom line but technology has enabled us to rise to the challenge right. we would have been our students wouldn't have been doing or learning anything right now if we didn't have access to this technology right. now that technology is available why why can't we use it to the maximum right. within our limitations and our strengths right. use the make the most use of it yes there will be there will be lot, lot of resistance there will need to be teacher preparation and if we are training our teachers in teaching them in online mode that means we are modeling the practice right and the question one of the questions which came up here is the internship of teachers right can they do it in an online mode is this an alternative i'm just asking a question but right. uh, personally i think why not yes. they can be supervised yes and it it shouldn't be an issue right but i think uh the people uh, stakeholders in educational journey they have to think outside of box and it's not face to face or online right. it has to be both right. we have to provide this option to students of tomorrow that they can do something else in addition to do a study which is happening worldwide we have students who are full time workers but are studying as well why do they have to be only students right so 
this COVID situation has given India a huge opportunity, and India is, is uh, promoting becoming an education provider instead of Indian students going out, being a source provider, being a center. So why can't we strengthen our this space right. and uh, provide education in both synchronous as well as asynchronous ma way. Right. I know India is wide. It has lots of diversity. Some will have access to uh, technology, some may not. So coming to whatever, wherever we can, right. we, we should be able to do that. Thank you, sir. And it, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Kotz. Uh, I think so. You need to unmute yourself, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Adit. Uh, I, I I think everybody agrees on this point that you know there's no replacement of the teacher. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but you know, in the given scenario, um, uh, we are facing little difficulty to conceptualize uh, a, a a a shift to online examination. And one of uh, the challenge before us, uh, you know, when we are talking of this, is uh, uh, the kind of uh, curriculum we have. The curriculum, when we designed, uh, it was designed on the on the presumption that this is to be transacted face to face. Face to face. Face to face. So, so a lot of activities which are there in the curriculum, the way these things are conceptualized, are different. I, I'll say this one thing uh, to to the chairperson of uh, Myers. Uh, <laughs> Uh, College of Education, uh, Dr. Gupta, uh, I know that you are an autonomous institution, right? right? You have the freedom, probably if I want to do it, it will be a little difficult for me to do it, but it's a little easy for you to do it. You take one unit of beard as an innovative uh, beard, right? right? Make a separate curriculum for online transaction. Keeping right. in view, keeping in view that this is the knowledge a teacher has to possess to become an effective teacher. These are the competencies a, a teacher requires to become an effective teacher in such kind of uh, area wherein uh, we have to go more online, right? right. And then uh, what could be the activities which are required for developing attitude, you know, when right. we are not face to face. Right. As a teacher, I'm not face to face. I'm not interacting with him physically, but I have to develop some kind of commitment in him towards the profession, towards the society, towards the country, towards the subject he is teaching. That's so right. what activities we can incorporate into the curriculum that this happens. And then on the same side, you know, we also develop some kind of uh, assessment techniques, which we are going to use for that kind of innovative mode. So let us have an, now this is an opportunity uh, mm -hmm. when we can really experiment on this. Like uh, I, I, I have an, uh, you know, uh, experience of uh, having such a course. Uh, this, uh, like I was member of that committee also. It is happening in uh, in 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 uh, 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 what you call there. There is some institute, ma'am. Uh, uh, Hemlata, ma'am. Hello. हाँ जी हेमलता मैम एक institute है ये क्या नाम है इसका जो राजस्थान में है इसे largest woman university. हाँ बनस्तली विद्या पीठ. बनस्तली Banastali Vidya Bipit, you know, in that institute, uh, you have an innovative program, innovative unit. So every year, they request all the students, like those who want to volunteer for this innovative program. Now, they, if there are 40, 50 students who will volunteer it, now they ask them to sit in a room every day. They give them books, they give them literature. Okay, you decide the curriculum. Mm -hmm. You formulate curriculum. They formulate curriculum like they like what they want to learn to become an effective teacher. So right. they decide with the help of some mentor, which is assigned to them. And after one and a half months time, they pass that curriculum in the board of studies okay. because it's a deemed university. They can do it. Similarly, right. you can also do it because you are a autonomous institution. Right. Right. So this is one I think you know uh, we should do it because that that that's always a you know conflict. Like you know when you are designing a curriculum. Uh, for your offline mode, it's a little different. And when you are doing it for online, you have different mechanisms. And uh, then you prepare your teachers also accordingly. Right. Because now what's happening is we uh, we were not ready. Absolutely. So before launching the program, if teachers, they are trained accordingly, we yeah. can handle that, uh, uh, you know, uh, with, with a, with a, with a, with a, with a uh, definite purpose. 
Uh, another thing, you know, in offline mode, like the kind of things we have, I would like to say that, you know, we should try to make use of uh, micro teaching the most, which NCT rejected uh, in, in, in our earlier framework. Uh, because uh, this is the time when we have tools where we can record, we have tools uh, where, where we can share, and we have tools where we can give reflections. So, students sitting there, like we give orientation, students sitting at home can practice. Right, on those parameters and then share that video uh, that video could be uh, through uh, general you know uh, YouTube we can share it through YouTube we can make it through loom we can like uh, studio uh, right. so we have different tools for making videos sure. we, can, we can share it and teachers can really uh, you know uh, make some kind of assessment on that so micro teaching can uh, come up as another technique which can be used uh, in a recorded way and in a simulated way uh, right. Students are given some kind of uh, orientation that these are the parameters on which you have to really work, make your plan, practice, share the video with us. And right. that video can be shared with all the peers also so that online we can present and then we can give some kind of feedback. feedback. So right. these kind of uh, things could be uh, done. Yes, of course, for end evaluation. I think, uh, uh, you know, places where you don't have much connectivity, uh, we should go for offline computer test. Of course, with social distancing. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Hemant, ma'am, uh, ah, some yes. comments from you? Uh, uh, I agree with, uh, to some extent with uh, Professor Amit that we have to design the curriculum as per the new paradigm shift that we are seeing today in yes. which we will decide ki which, uh, if at the moment we are not having that program to uh, which uh, course, uh, which unit should be online, which unit be offline. First thing, we have to decide it and then we will divide the mode of delivery. It will be online, then it will be online, though definitely the curriculum designing will do. Second thing I would like that you people, please, uh, uh, because you are, uh, again, it is a contextual based, you are working in an autonomous in, uh, organization and having a very uh, branding also. So you people can do one thing, uh, internal assessment may, you can have certain other activities also. For example, sometimes students not they are uh, not in a position to attend. The, they they want to uh, participate in some car rally. They want to uh, uh, definitely during that period if they are going for five or six days, so they are going to miss their classes. How they will uh, give their attendance at all? And if the uh, participation ka marks so, if they won prize, they, it will definitely bring laurel to the institution. So you can give them uh, assignment marks. Uh, internal assessment may you can give them that bit is also so okay. like this you can identify certain uh, internal assessment activities uh, besides the curriculum in which they uh, they have to go so, uh, uh, enhancing professional competency ke liye, yeah. secondly I also agree the micro teaching should become the part and parcel of the teacher education and again I am emphasizing you must think over competitive participative teacher internship Right. That is my last word. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I would like to, you know, thank all the panelists for their excellent uh, discourse on alternative uh, assessment uh, uh, in teacher education. I'm sure it was an eye-opening session for all of us. In fact, all our faculty members and students of the postgraduate department are uh, very eager to ask certain questions. So I'll uh, request my co-host, uh, Dr. Mulrad Sharma, uh, to kindly, uh, you know, start the question-answer session. And we could maybe ask one question and uh, it is open for the house uh, who would like to take up the answer or, uh, you know, I could uh, request individual uh, to take up the, uh, you know, answer to that particular question accordingly. So, uh, so start, let's start with the interaction. Uh, yeah, good afternoon to all panelists and uh, inspector members. So the first question asked by the student is that uh, what are the uh, various assessment strategies that could be used during this period? Uh, they want some specific names and the specific strategies which can be used so that they, they are uh, familiar with that also. Thank you. Uh, okay, so I think uh, Professor Amit Kotz can start with this uh, question. Some specific strategies, sir, yeah, as you know, uh, mentioned. Uh, see uh, what uh, like if, if you say that assessment like you know uh, how the students are performing uh, 
in, in different type of activities. Probably uh, we can take up the use of uh, some quizzing and that quiz could be, uh, you know, MCQ also, short answer question also, long answer also. It, it depends, like, you know, uh, it can be on the basis of assignments also. Like we can ask, like uh, sharing some content, giving them, them some kind of uh, maybe uh, asking them a evaluate a paper, write a paper uh, review, uh, right. developing some kind of competencies, writing competencies and all these kind of things. Uh, developing some kind of uh, uh, reflection, uh, like, you know, they can uh, use screencast, uh, like through which uh, they can take one paper online. They can uh, read that and can give some reflection about it. Right, uh, they can, uh, you know, take up some uh, uh, institutions website, uh, some very like, uh, you know, some very eminent uh, NAC accredited institution and try to develop a uh, develop a case study on that. Case study. Uh, right. And, you know, on, on the basis of uh, this screenocastic, they can prepare a video uh, yes. showing the, uh, you know, website of the institution and then uh, talking about strengths and weaknesses and right. uh, giving their own reflections. Right. Uh, you know, uh, sharing uh, their, uh, like, you know, uh, for example, there is some content on that content, they can give a write up and, uh, you know, on Google Classroom only we can evaluate and we can give the grades also. Right. Sir. So right. we have different techniques like, you know, uh, ma'am has talked about uh, Google Forms, uh, Kahoot. So these are the techniques which can be used during, uh, during the, you know, content uh, 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 that dissemination and can be used as a evaluation technique also. Right. Thank you so much. Another one I can suggest. Yes, ma'am. Huh. Uh, uh, after completion of the module, what they can do, they can ex do one exercise in which they will have certain MCQ and then short answer type. Then one visual they can present. And after showing that visual of 10 or uh, 5 or 7 minutes, you can ask certain question on that. It, that visual can be on any teaching skill on any teaching method so that the uh, uh, student uh, teacher will come to know to what extent they have learned. Right. This is the visual uh, and the latest I have seen in such a uh, test they have done it. Right. They, right. Uh, online test. They are doing it. They are showing the visuals and after showing that visual asking certain questions like we, will, we used to do at the comprehension mass, uh, passages in our school time. The, so, uh, so that the uh, uh, theme should be very much clear, and right. th that's very true. Theme must be clear, and they can do that. Sure. Uh, next question, Dr. Uh, uh, next one is uh, that how do we assess the logical mathematical knowledge through rubrics in training preschool teachers? So it is regarding preschool teachers. Okay. And that's, and that's uh, mathematics. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, Professor Rekha Kol can. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, rubric in itself uh, is, I, I did mention in my uh, talk earlier that there are many rubrics av available, but the content of those rubrics you can change. And arriving, getting a perfect rubric, it will take a teacher to develop two to three either semesters or years. Right. What, how are you going to reach the learning outcomes right. to get the language right and all? Now, how are you going to do it? Is how are you going to set up the learning task first? Uh, I, I would do in this um, COVID time, there are, there's so much terminology which we didn't know. We didn't know, I didn't know anything about the bacteria or the viruses the new names which were always being used, we were not used to them coming from science. Going to mathematics being a mathematics question is we didn't know what, what's the concept of flattening of curve. So can you ask your students, whatever level they are, either they are at a primary level or a secondary school student, you do some data mining and set up the question where students has to show their concepts of uh, addition, subtraction, or even division. And they will pro uh, present their findings in form of a table. Right. And for that table, you will have a rubric 
what level of understanding the student is demonstrating. Right. And these rubrics are available right from year two till year 12 or even in university levels. And that's where you use it. Right. Thank you so much. It depends how you're setting up the learning task. Right. Right. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, so, Dr. Ronika, uh, if you have uh, any questions. Yes, sir. I have a question. Am I audible to all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, the question is, how is student diversity addressed in alternative assessment? Okay. Since we have diverse needs of children, right. so how we are able to address those diversities? So I think uh, either Professor Puthari uh, can take that question. Okay. Uh, diversity, even in our situation, it is very difficult to identify. Number one, because there are no tools, no nothing, no assessment strategy where you identify the diversity. Diversity in terms of the area from where he is coming, from which category he is coming, which area he is coming, he needs the special attention. But what diversity you are talking, that is even in offline also. Online, it is absolutely difficult. But here we are not going to compromise absolutely with online. Right. So students are coming offline and, and, and at that time, whatever you want, that's why I, I have used the word profile. Each yeah. teacher educator must have a profile. If I have a 12 students or 15 students in my methodology courses, I should know the clear cut profile of that student, his background from where he's coming, his, his ability to communicate, his ability to read in which language, uh, his family background and all other things That's that, that is there. And such cases, typically such cases are not much more. You can say 68% of our in the normal probability curve, they are within the middle part. So at the extreme of the normal probability curve on the left-hand side and right-hand side, hardly there are five such persons. And identifying them, it's not at all difficult. So then you can deal it. You, you can see another, we don't have a culture of discussing about our students in our group. That is all teacher educators who never meet together and they will say that, okay, here is the case, what to do? Right. But Metswala also needs to be taken care with the help of psychological or sociological background. So right. such cases should be discussed. So right. diversity can definitely be addressed. Right. So Dr. Bajaj or Dr. Nishtarana, you have any questions? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. So, a question is, as uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, the field visits and community participation is important. So, how can we motivate the community for giving their participation in, uh, during this challenging uh, situation? Right, so, Professor Hammond, I probably could take up that question. Uh, yes. Huh? Community participation? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. And community participation in this, ma'am, because uh, recently RT Act has said okay, you will have to uh, bring the children who are uh, away from the schools. They, uh, you will have to uh, ensure them that they should come to your school and get the opportunity like right. other students. Right. Now we, uh, we, we fail to understand. And now in the online education, we have come across that uh, opportunity which we can handle uh, through these children. Suppose you are living in a, in a society where uh, the children of the construct uh, the labor have they, they are uh, coming to the uh, construction site and they are not going to the school but they will definitely you will have to pursue them that they, they should uh, come to your uh, class and where you will uh, uh, ensure that they, you will be teaching them through that and then you can ask them to uh, uh, for few uh, days you will ensure uh, uh, ensure them that they, they should come to your class so that they, you can teach them as you are teaching to the other students in the uh, uh, real mode in your schools. Right. Community participatory means you will have to uh, pursue, uh, pursuance is required. You will have to ask them that they should come to your class and they, when they will uh, come to your class, when you will give uh, something new to them. Right. something new uh, you will give to them definitely persuasion is required in this case community participating right. otherwise uh, who will come no will uh, no one will come and then uh, uh, you will say i will teach you so definitely few of the parents you ask them they should come to my class i will teach them and i will make them learn certain things and with the when you will uh, doing uh, video recording so definitely a new 
aura is you giving to them. You are doing something new in front of them. They will try to grasp them right. as we are doing in the uh, in regular face to face meeting. This is what I want to convey. Community participative learning only possible to pursuants. Thank you so much. Yes, hard work is required. Definitely hard work is required. आप कैसे अपने उनको बोलेंगे कि आप बच्चों मेरी क्लास में आओ करो मैं आपको अच्छा कुछ आपको उनको रिवार्ड इंसेंटिव्स देने पड़ेंगे सो दैट दे कम टू योर क्लास एंड लास्ट जो होगा वो टीचर की पढ़ाई लिखाई द टीचर हाउ यू विल मेक योर टीचिंग लर्निंग प्रोसेस वेरी इफेक्टिव इंटरेक्टिव थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच मैम डॉक्टर निष्ठा यस सर गुड आफ्टरनून सर गुड आफ्टरनून मैम Here is one question uh, from our student that uh, what are the appropriate programs or strategies for uh, students who belong to rural areas, uh, in which uh, we can ensure that students uh, uh, belonging to those areas uh, can take full advantage or benefit out of e-learning and uh, uh, appear in uh, e-assessments. Right. So, the first uh, thing that uh, we must ensure that any student who is located in a rural area has a proper connectivity has a proper hardware or a smartphone or a tv or a computer with him and the power supply there is okay the internet facility is there and then in my opinion the teacher pupil relation has to extend beyond the regular class limits you know what the regular limits it is a 24 hour thing let the student through a phone through mobile through any other means get in touch with the teacher or the educator if he feels that the need of any assistance any help or any guidance from him this this channel should be open always or email so the teacher can respond to the teacher to the student at that time and at the same time we have to encourage the students to feel free to interact with them it is a question of uh, build, building a mutual trust and we have to open up that is why i was all the time you know uh, trying to emphasize the role of a rapport between the teacher and the student so that their shyness goes away and the student feels free to talk to the edu educator or his teacher anytime on any subject he like and counseling services should be made available to him also at that time and in case of any difficulty he can be given specific time to either uh, visit the institution because we, we are not talking about the visit of too many people in the under the present circumstances right. maybe one or two or five or 10 can come sometimes and tutorials online if that's possible we can always organize those things but one thing is there that some kind of uh, communication link has to be maintained and ensured right. that is very important right thank you so much uh, so we are coming actually to the end of the session one last question that i would like to take up uh, is that uh, one of the students has asked that we've been talking about you know the post graduate department we've talked about the bed but we have not talked about b ed special education program and uh, so these teachers you know are dealing with students who are uh, uh, with mild mental uh, retardation or learning difficulties or intellectually disabled students how can you know technology or uh, alternative assessment uh, in teacher education help these kind of teacher who are preparing themselves to teach special children so th this question is open for anybody to take a you know shot at and <laughs> answer and try to see how we can do probably we could start with professor cots can say you can say uh, i think he needs to unmute okay uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i was saying that you know i'm not a expert on special <laughs> education but as far as uh, uh, evaluation techniques are concerned i think uh, uh, the teachers who are who are, who are uh, getting education for special education they are normal people 
Right. Uh, right. So, uh, so anything which is happening for them uh, is happening for them also. One thing. Uh, second issue is that, you know, this is the time when we can really make use of this time for learning and understanding different techniques, uh, different online tools through which we can really help uh, the, the, the special children uh, to, to engage with the uh, teaching, learning, evaluation, listening, uh, working like that. So those online, uh, online tools which can be used for uh, imparting instructions to uh, the different special children. This is the time when we can really work and design our uh, curricula accordingly so that you know we, we, we are better equipped to use online tools for educating special children. Right. Thank you so much. So um, we've uh, actually come to the end of our session and I'm extremely uh, thankful to uh, our group of panelists for really interacting uh, with us, uh, you know, sharing their experiences uh, and uh, coming to some very valid points that would be helpful in uh, designing a new curriculum, new ways of assessment uh, in the coming semesters and the coming sessions. Uh, in fact, uh, our uh, you know uh, agencies like UGC have also now given a hint that students can pursue two courses at a time, one through online mode and one uh, through the regular mode. So that would be a big flip to the learning management systems and their designs and allow students to uh, you know pursue multiple um, uh, you know courses at the same time. Uh, but I'm sure that. Uh, uh, our college would be working on uh, the suggestions that have been given by all the experts and for any help we would be you know troubling you uh, in uh, the future uh, and um, uh, probably have some more sessions uh, to get some more clarity uh, on the uh, initial thoughts that all of you have expressed so on behalf of the Meyer College of Education its students faculty members and the management I uh, you know thank all of you for sparing your valuable time and coming online and interacting with us through this roundtable event. Thank you so much.